Hey guys, it's Cami. I am excited to paint tonight. Um, I have been hired to do a Bob Ross-esque kind of painting, um, paint party, I mean, and um, I thought it would be super fun to um, practice like Bob Ross, but the thing is, um, he painted with oils, and I usually paint with acrylics. I can paint with oils, but it, there's a little bit of a different process that happens. So, um, I am working on um, an 11 by 14 canvas, and I haven't prepped it yet, but I did get my paints ready to go on a palette. Normally I don't do this with acrylics, but um, I thought, well, if we're gonna go like Bob Ross, let's try it and see what happens. But I will have to paint like my pants are on fire because acrylics dry so very quickly. So um, I have a little bit of titanium white mixed with a slow drying agent for acrylic paints. What I'm working on is this covered bridge with the fall trees and the water and it's beautiful um, and I'm gonna work on painting it so let's see what happens so I've got hookers green um, ivory black I think um, raw umber this is an oxide red oxide alizarin crimson yellow ochre cad yellow medium and a naphthol red light, which is kind of like a cad red, and titanium white. So I'm gonna prep my canvas. I just sprayed water with a little bit of flow aid on the canvas, and that's gonna help this first layer sink down into the canvas. And I'm gonna give this these two things, the, the slow drying agent. I'm just gonna paint the canvas with a layer of this. And, uh, polar bear in a snowstorm. Oh, that flow aid's gonna make it go nice and far for me. No big, huge transitions of color here, are there? white on white. I go across it because there's some thick places and some thin places in the paint and um, going across helps break them up diagonally just working the paint into the canvas. There we go. Awesome. I'm gonna watch my big brush Oh, I'm not used to such big brushes. <laughs> We're painting like Bob Ross tonight. I just did a background. Um, he used a, something called liquid clear or liquid white um, to do his backgrounds. And so I'm mimicking that with a slow drying agent because I'm working with acrylic um, and white. So what's gonna happen now when I I'm looking at my brushes my I'm looking at these brushes going okay which one would Bob use um, <laughs> so I think I'm gonna get this brush it's nice and thick the bristles are have a, a reasonable amount of stiffness but it's got some softness to it which is important and for the sky I'm gonna get on some yellow ochre and this red oxide color. Now it's going to blend on the sky because the white is already wet or still wet, which is good. I think that's going to be my main challenge tonight is um, fighting the paint, keeping it from drying and it's already like drying on the palette. So this will be an interesting challenge. I'm gonna bring some of that color down here because this will be water. Just a little bit of the glow of the sky. We'll get more on there. This is a brush that I really do not care for. 
um, for painting with acrylics most of the time. However, it looks like the right shape to make the trees. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna pounce into my yellows. And hopefully that background stays nice and wet for me. So I'm gonna create those trees in the background. Mmm, good brush for this. All right. This is really loud. I'm gonna, I should have museum puttied this up today. This isn't super great for the brushes to be pouncing so hard like this. But it, that is kind of what he did. So, and it's working. More yellow ochre. Down there. All right. Cool. All right, now we're working our way towards our reds. So I'm gonna do the oxide with some ochre. And add some more dimension of color here. I studied up. He talks about just adding the impressions of trees which is kind of what we're doing. Not painting each individual thing. Some of these are really bright. Get more towards what's gonna be kind of browns and stuff. Ooh, some for the water. washed my brush. I'm just pouncing around in these different colors. So I'm going to try that naphthol red light, which is kind of like the cad red light. Just a tiny bit of paint on my brush and that's cool. It just brightens it up a little bit. More brighter, more brighter. Okay, now I've fussed around long enough. I don't want this to go to get dry on me. So, um, down to the there was a little bit of sap green happening and a little bit of brown. And in this. So my acrylic paints on the palette are going to dry by the time I'm done with this, like be kind of nasty to use by the time I'm done with this painting. Um, and uh, oils don't do, don't go that way so fast. So I'm even going to add a little bit of black 
for some really dark it out in the turpentine this is my soap and water this is plain water and then he would beat it against the the easel and beat the hell out of it beat the tar out of it or something like that oh my I just painted my wall awesome yeah I don't recommend that here's another brush that I never paint with um, it's a bristle brush and it's got the nice rounded shape um, but I think it's gonna make some great bushes so I'm gonna pop back in with some brights and get some woo, get some woo in there. Yes, that's really fun actually. I like that a lot. Oh, too much woo. Just it's gonna be interesting I'm just saying all right I'm gonna pounce in some more umber and ochre oh yeah mellowed out there we go see there are no mistakes only happy accidents all right. Cool. Getting some lines going on. Oh, I need to get some more umber happening down here. It's not going to behave like oils where you can just make it super smooth um to compensate for that i could probably i'm gonna spritz a little water just with my and i can't make my palette too drippy if i want to pick it up yeah that's better a little bit of water on my brush pretty good for the general idea of his background um, I'm gonna ha I would have to do some serious um, adjusting probably to make it exact but that paint with the water trick is looking pretty good That is so much fun, it's hard to stop, just saying. It really is fun. So, he uses a palette knife. Prussian blue is a lovely color. And he mixed the tiniest bit of Prussian blue with white, so that that white that goes along the waterline isn't exactly pure white. So, We'll see if I can make that happen. Cool. Oh, yeah, just like Bob Ross. 
little bit more. I'm probably dragging this shirt in the paint too. Yes. Because it's exciting. Okay, something I didn't do in the background that I probably should. I'm gonna take a very filberty looking brush and get some umber and some black and I'm gonna have to mix it with a little bit of water because I want it to flow off the brush. These are things while I figure out how to paint a Bob Ross painting with acrylics. So along the water's edge, there's gonna be little shadows and dips and noodles, and that would have been really handy to paint it before I did the white line, but you know, got ahead of myself. There are no mistakes, right? I'm using my buddy Phil to get some more dimension of color in there. Depth and shadows. Because some of those areas are going to be really thick with foliage and some of them aren't. And somewhere back there is a road. So we'll figure that out in a second. Cool. Awesome. Okay, two more detail-y sort of items I'm noticing. I need to get my liner brush, and of course I have to water down the paint. And I'm going to do the brown and the red oxide. So the raw umber and the red oxide. Uh, I'm gonna say yellow to lighten it. Let's see if that works. and plenty of water. So this is for his, um, for the tree trunks. There we go. Oh yeah. At this point in life, he would say indication, just the indication of something happening back there. Just some branches, some trunk. Need more water and more. And lines and sticks and things. There. Now I'm happy. Okay. Now on onward. So we're going to use that big brush again and put in the ground. And I think he went pretty straight up umber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to putting in where I think the road is going to go and the bridge and then some land kind of goes this way as well. I'm gonna lay down color. It's lightening up because of the, the white, yay. Okey-dokey. So I laid the color on there. Now this is part of why I really don't like these brushes is that I can pounce 
and it's some of them is scraping away and getting the white paint back off of it so um, it's just because um, acrylic paint and oil paint have different textures and this isn't my favorite brush obviously I think I'm not gonna have real great success unless that dries, so. I could keep trying to add layers of paint, but it's not going to um, go over the top of the wet paint, so I'm gonna let it settle for a minute and work on my bridge. Cute little flat brush. This is what my palette looks like so far, and so um, I'm putting some umber on my brush and it's going to be fairly thin and I'm just going to block in where this thing is going to go remembering perspective so fun so he likes his tall pitched roofs right and the angle of the roof. Sweet. Yeah, it's just gonna see the higher, the more I drag the more paint I'm taking off, so I kind of have to let it chill for a little bit. We can play with this a little bit longer. So the bridge goes over the water, and then there's gonna be a shadow under the bridge. Looks like a mess, but that's kind of at the point where the painting is at the moment. It kind of, every painting almost has like an ugly duckling face where it, you look like, oh, I'm never going to pull this together. Yes. More dark. Bob Ross's um, teacher, Bill Alexander, um, was really entertaining to watch. He was um, German, and so his his accent was really fun, and gets so excited about his painting. Daka, daka, daka. You just fired in. So he was very entertaining. You guys get to see the real and the raw because I'm like figuring this out as I go along. All right, there's no more scrub left to that. Hey, Scott, what up? working on the cabin for a minute and a half or maybe a little longer um, while I um... Woo! that was that was talent did you see me flip the brush and catch it didn't mean to do that I'm looking for the right brush um, at this point he used a palette knife which uh... Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of brown. Looks like he's got a little bit of blue in there for some weird reason. 
And I'm gonna put in a little bit of yellow ochre because that'll vary the color. Hopefully I didn't just turn it green. All right, so. And then on the inside, there's a little bit of a dark thing. And this second side is a little bit lighter, so I'm mixing that color with a little bit of white. But not really mixing it, just kind of, because you'll see in a second. Probably a little too much white action there, but that's okay. It's rugged wood, man. It's a, been a long life for this old bridge. And then, yeah, a little bit better color. Kind of looks like it was painted at one point in time and then it got neglected, new roads got built or something. Isn't that cute? We got our little highlight edges that he does. Oh yeah, rock and roll. I will do it with a filbert. Proof that he's my favorite. There's some of the road. I'm digging the brush. Sweet. So I think we need a little bit more of a, a corner a contrast color. Okay, there's our little cabin dude, and or I said cabin, but I meant covered bridge. I'm dipping in a little bit of the black and making some spaces under, some shadowy bits under the cabin. some sort of rocky looking things on the other side and that's probably where the road is although we don't see the road um, he did the a little bit of a white fence so I'm gonna water down some white with my little detail brush Ooh, that was fun it's everything drips so I with it, so I have to be careful. And something back in there. Oh, that's a really wavy thing, but I uh, you get the idea. That's cool. Now we're going to work on our foreground and we'll be just about done. So I really liked that pouncing action, but I'm, I'll see if it works with, I, this is like dry, check it out. So I'm going to start with the yellows again. 
I'm going to create some create some bushes. Oh, that's really bright, isn't it? Ha! I'm going to tone it down with some yellow ochre. So still pretty bright, but that's okay. It'll continue to get toned down. Yes. Kind of cool. I need to do some dark in here also. Some more dark. All right, so now. Oh, that got fluorescent on us. Woo-ha! Exciting. It's just proof I'm ready for some more colors on my palette. I ran out of yellow ochre. I was trying to play around. Yes. These bright colors make me happy. All right, and a nice red little something there. So now I'm going to pounce into the, the um, raw umber and a little bit of that red oxide color and I'm going to too bright. Killing it with a little black and more raw umber. I could have done this first. That would have been a little bit smarter idea, but that's okay. We're playing tonight. We're deciding how to go about this with acrylics because they just don't work the same as... This is the road, by the way. Um, acrylics just don't work the same as um, oils. I did bust out my heavy body paints, and more professional looking paints, so. So I made a mess, basically, is what it's called. That's the technical term. So I'm just kind of scraping off little bits of the color. I want it to look, maybe there's some old tire ruts. They've been grown over a little bit. I don't know guys, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna highlight my bushes, my grass a little bit more. Why not? We haven't used play with a fan brush tonight. So yellow ochre is really what I want though. So gotta reach over and get my yellow ochre. And So the fan brush, this is a bristle fan brush, so I can be a little bit rougher with it than a sable or a ta taclon. So, um, which is good, because I'm gonna turn it sideways and I'm gonna turn it um, flat. And that just creates, if I push on the canvas a little bit, 
it creates some little ups in the paint and it looks like I painted grass. So that's a nice little cheat. The key is not doing the same motion with the brush exactly the same way because um, then it'll start looking like a fan brush. You guys, I think this is just about done. You put some little scraggles of stems, a modern down some brown. In the sticks and things at the water's edge, Anytime you add detail to the foreground, it's a good thing. If you want to focus on the foreground. And I think as your eye draws down from this very dark place, the foreground is a great place for your eye to play. So I am going to water down this red naphthal light. And He just painted Ross, his last name, but that's not my jam. And he signed it over there. I'm gonna sign it here. Awesome. Hey guys. There's my Bob Ross. There's my cameized Bob Ross, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, it's been super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if you guys have anything that you would like to watch me paint or have any questions, I am always looking for ideas because I wanna make this interesting for you. So please message me, email me, go to my website and email me. That would be fab. Um, thanks you guys. Take care, bye.